The Alamillo Bridge, Construction Simulation Models in Isistrobe. My name is Fotios Ioano and I'm a professor in civil engineering at the University of Michigan. My co-author is Vera Sakalikidruang Silp, who is a professor of civil engineering at Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok, Thailand. I am pleased to be able to make this presentation about the construction of the famous Alamillo Bridge in Spain and to describe briefly the easy strobe simulation models that we have developed for this project. If you are interested, easy strobe can be downloaded as part of our stroboscope simulation system from www.easystrobe.org or from www.stroboscope.org. The Alamillo Bridge crosses a channel of the Guadalquivir River in Seville, Spain. It was constructed as part of the building program for the International Expo that took place in Seville in 1992. The designer of the Alamillo Bridge is the famous architect and engineer Santiago Calatrava. As this photograph clearly shows, Calatrava designed the Alamillo Bridge as a work of art with a single pylon that rises at an angle away from the deck and which together with the deck resembles a giant harp whose strings are the cable stays from the pylon to the deck. The bridge is not only unique architecturally, but also structurally. It is the only bridge of its kind in the world whose pylon is not back anchored. This means that the entire bridge had to balance at all times at a single massive pedestal and footing below the pylon. Before presenting the simulation models, we shall begin with a quick overview of the structural elements of the Alamillo Bridge that are necessary to understand its construction. The Alamillo Bridge is a cable-stayed bridge. Its deck is 200 meters long and is supported by 13 pairs of cables that run from the deck to a massive single pylon on the west bank that rises away from the deck at an angle of 58 degrees to a vertical height of 134 meters. This simplified cross-section of the deck of the Alamillo Bridge shows its three main components. Is the center is the spine of the deck, which is a steel box girder that runs the length of the bridge. Its cross-section is hexagonal and has a height of 4.55 meters. On both sides of the steel box girder, there are steel wings spaced every 4 meters that support the concrete deck pavement. The deck itself is supported by pairs of cables spaced every 12 meters that run through prefabricated anchors in the box girder. This photograph shows the bridge deck from below. In the center is the bottom of the hexagonal steel box girder. On both sides, spaced every 4 meters, are the steel wings that cantilever outwards. The circles indicate a pair of cable anchors that support the deck. This photograph shows the bridge deck from above. In the center is the top of the hexagonal steel box girder that serves as a pedestrian walkway. On either side are composite concrete slabs that support three lanes of traffic in each direction. Also shown are the pairs of cable stays that support the deck and run up to the massive inclined pylon on the west side of the bridge. This drawing shows one of the 12 meter long segments that were welded together to form the hexagonal steel box girder. As shown here, each 12-meter segment of the steel box girder included all the necessary stiffeners and attachment plates and also included one pair of embedded cable anchors. Also shown is the temporary false work that was used to support the bridge deck from below during the actual construction. Shown here is the long hexagonal steel box girder. It was prefabricated in segments 12 meters long and then transported to the site to be assembled. Triangular candelivered steel wings were then welded perpendicular to the steel box girder, spaced 4 meters apart. Each pair of adjacent steel wings supported a precast one-way concrete slab, which served as a formwork for a cast-in-place slab poured on top. Shear connectors ensured composite action between the slabs. As shown here, prefabricated steel caissons were used to construct the pylon. Also included was the external walkway that enabled welding each steel caisson to the next. In the background are two cranes. 
The derrick was used for the pylon and the tower crane was used for the deck. Shown here are two views of the inclined pylon under construction. The left view shows the temporary elevator that ran on the back of the pylon during construction. This elevator was later removed. The right view shows a steel caisson being lifted into place. The oval opening at the bottom of the caisson is for the internal stairwell that runs the entire height of the pylon. The remainder of the caisson was filled with concrete. This view shows the bottom of the deck near completion. The cables that form each of the cable stays are shown hanging from the deck after the final tensioning operation. There were three construction plans for the Alamillo Bridge. The first plan, shown here as Case 1, was the original construction plan envisioned by Calatrava as part of the initial conception of the bridge. This plan also became part of the bidding documents for the Alamillo Bridge project. According to the bidding documents, the components of the steel box girder that formed the spine of the deck would be prefabricated in segments 12 meters long. Then each 12 meter steel box segment would be transported and welded as a cantilever in front of the previously placed box segment. Then three pairs of steel wings would be welded to the left and the right of the box segment spaced 4 meters apart. Pre-cast slabs would then be placed on top of the steel wings to serve as formwork for a cast-in-place slab that would serve as the final pavement. This cycle of operations would result in the construction of a new complete 12-meter segment of the bridge deck that would then be supported by a pair of cable stays connected to the bridge pylon. Similarly, the pylon was to have its own cycle of operations and was to be constructed with a sliding formwork in segments where each segment corresponded to a single pair of cables to the deck. In this manner, the construction of the bridge deck and the pylon would progress in cycles. As each new segment of the deck and the pylon were constructed, they would be connected with a post-tension pair of cables and the cycle would repeat again. According to this original plan, construction of the bridge would have taken 24 months and would have been complete by August 1991. The contract for the Alamillo Bridge was eventually awarded to a joint venture between two companies, Dragados y Construcciones S.A. and Fomento de Construcciones y Contratas S.A. While preparing their bid, these two contractors discovered that the construction plan proposed by Calatrava could not achieve the desired project schedule. A major flaw was the requirement that the various distinct and fundamentally different components of the bridge deck which included all steel work and all concrete work, had to be completed at the same time in small segments, 12 meters long, to ensure the full weight necessary to balance the corresponding segments of the pylon. The second construction plan, shown here as Case 2, was submitted by the two construction companies along with their bid. The plan for Case 2 called for temporarily damming the river to expose the riverbed underneath the bridge deck and then to construct the hexagonal box girder on temporary supports placed on the exposed ground. The same false work would also support the assembly of the roadways, which would follow some distance behind the box girder starting from the pylon side. In this manner, construction of the bridge deck could proceed ahead of the pylon and thus would be independent of the speed of pylon construction. Simultaneously with the construction of the roadway, the concrete pylon would be cast in place in segments that would then be connected with cable stays to the finished deck segments. Portion of the false work, supporting the deck, would then be removed as needed for the deck to balance the erection of the pylon. According to the revised schedule, the bridge would take one month longer and be completed by September of 1991. Case 3 is the plan that was actually used by the contractors to construct the bridge. The deck was constructed on temporary supports that rested on the exposed riverbed, just like in Case 2. The major difference was the construction of the pylon. The plan to use sliding formwork was abandoned, and instead the pylon was constructed using prefabricated steel caissons welded on top of each other. Each steel caisson corresponded to one pair of cable stays and served both as concrete formwork and as an outer continuous steel shell for the pylon. The use of steel caissons reduced the construction time for the pylon by one-third because each prefabricated caisson was a complete assembly of all steel components, 
including the concrete steel reinforcement for the cast-in-place concrete, the internal steel stairwell, the concrete delivery pipe that ran up the stairwell, the components of the temporary exterior elevator, and the temporary exterior scaffolding that was necessary for welding one case on to the next. Based on the extensive description of the Alamillo Bridge in the book by Spiro Polalis, Yamin Lopez developed a three cyclone simulation models that correspond to the three proposed construction plans. The cyclone network for case one is shown on the right. All three cyclone models are available online at the link listed in the references for this paper. They will not be described in this presentation. It is important to emphasize that the primary objective of these cyclone simulation models was educational. They were intended to serve as case studies to help students explore simulation as a tool for selecting the appropriate construction plan for a project. Unfortunately, however, all three cyclone models contain several modeling errors that led to incorrect statistical results and to inappropriate conclusions. These mistakes are corrected in the three easy strobe simulation models described in this presentation. It is also important to point out that the cyclone models, and consequently the easy strobe models, represent simplified versions of the actual construction plans. Shown in this diagram is case 1, the easy strobe or model for Calatrava's original balanced cantilever plan. The easy strobe model corrects the corresponding cyclone model by adding a feedback loop that is highlighted here by the red Q and the two red links. The absence of this feedback loop in the cyclone model is a significant modeling mistake that allows one pylon segment to be poured right after another without waiting first to connect each pylon segment to its corresponding deck segment to maintain the stability of the bridge. Thus, the construction of the pylon can outpace the construction of the deck significantly. The purpose of this feedback loop is to prevent the construction of the next pylon segment until the previous pylon segment has been connected via the stay cables to the corresponding deck segment. This is the live model for case 1 in Easy Strobe. To edit the global parameters, we can right-click anywhere on the page. Here we can select the seed, the time limit, and the number of replications. We can double-click an activity to enter its name and the distribution for its duration. Similarly, we can double-click a queue to enter its name and its initial resource contents. To run the simulation, we right-click anywhere on the page and select Run Simulation. This brings up the stroboscope simulation system that runs the 100 replications and produces statistics for each result that we have defined in the model. We can now return to EasyStrobe and right-click a queue to see its statistics collected from the last replication. Shown here are the averages from 100 simulations of the incorrect cyclone model and the corrected EasyStrobe model for case 1. The average project duration is the same for both models and is about 368 days. The statistics for the deck segments are also the same. However, the average number of days that a constructed pylon segment has to wait before it can be connected to the corresponding deck segment are quite different. In the cyclone model, pylon segments have to wait an average of 17 days, which is clearly excessive and there can be as many as three unsupported pylon segments waiting to be connected to the deck. This is clearly not the balanced cantilever construction process that was meant to be modeled. In the easy stroke model, that includes the red feedback loop, the average waiting time for a pylon segment drops from 17 days to 1.5 days, and the maximum number of unsupported pylon segments drops from 3 to 1. This is as it should be for balanced cantilever construction. This excessive waiting time of 17 days in the incorrect cyclone model did not go unnoticed by its developer. Unfortunately, however, it led to the wrong conclusion that Calatrava's plan should be abandoned because it would cause an unavoidable weight imbalance during construction. Clearly, the correct conclusion after noticing the excessive waiting time of 17 days in the simulation results 
is that there must be a mistake in the simulation model. This mistake is the absence of the necessary red feedback loop that was shown earlier. The easy stroke model for case 2 shows the construction plan that the contractors used to prepare their bid. In this plan, the construction of the deck was to lead ahead of the pylon and be performed on temporary supports placed on the dry riverbed. The easy stroke model corrects the corresponding cyclone model in four ways. The first and major correction was to prevent the construction of unsupported pylon segments from overtaking the construction of the corresponding deck segments. This is accomplished by the addition of the TAN Q that prevents the installation of rebar for the next pylon segment before the previous pylon segment is connected with cables to the deck. The second correction was to prevent the simulation model from constructing the hexagonal box girder as one long tube that spans the entire length of the bridge without any wings or the roadway and without any connection with cables to the pylon. This correction was made by changing the relative priorities of the related activities. The third correction was to ensure that the installation of the cables in the pylon can start only after sliding up the formwork for the previous pylon segment to expose the holes through which to pass the stay cables. The fourth correction is the addition of a link to ensure that the concrete for the next pylon section is placed only after the stay cables for the previous section have been tensioned. Thus, the last pylon segment that was cast and cured is first anchored to the corresponding deck segment before taking on the additional load of wet concrete for the next pylon segment. The easy stroke model for case 3 shows the actual construction plan followed by the contractors to build the bridge. The construction of the deck is similar to case 2, but the construction of the pylon uses prefabricated steel caissons instead of sliding formwork. The easy stroke model corrects the corresponding cyclone model in two important ways. The major mistake in the cyclone model for case 3 is that it allows the crane to start lifting the 14 steel caissons for the pylon sequentially, one after another, without any prerequisite conditions. Thus, the cyclone model allows the 14 steel caissons to be lifted in the air, where they remain floating and unsupported while waiting to be welded to each other. The second mistake was that the crane for the pylon does not support each steel caisson while it is being positioned in its final location and then welded to the previous caisson. These and other more minor mistakes were corrected in the easy stroke model by adding several new cues and links. If you would like copies of the easy stroke models for the Alamillo bridge, or if you have any questions, please email me at photios at umich.edu. For more information and to download Stroboscope and EasyStrobe, please use the URLs on this page. Thank you.